Hi everyone, thanks for listening to my presentations. Today I'll be talking about hypothyroidism symptoms. Hypothyroidism symptoms. And this will form part two of seven when it comes to hypothyroidism generally. Remember part one, right? Hashimoto's steroiditis. And there I have made a reference today is that I'll be publishing the clinical features or symptoms of hypothyroidism. Okay? That's exactly what I'm doing right now. Let's go. Where is the disease? Remember, hypothalamic pituitary thyroid axis, right? It can be at the level of hypothalamus. So it can be hypothalamic pituitary disease, or it could be primarily within the thyroid itself called primary thyroid disease. So symptoms are determined by the rate of changes in thyroid stimulating hormone T3, T4, or determined by the deficiency and how much. Okay, so the rate, the rate of changes will determine the symptoms. And the depth of deficiency, how, how severely low or minimally low or mildly low will determine the symptoms. When it is gradual, the symptoms are less obvious. Okay? And that is likely going to happen in primary hypothyroidism, meaning the problem is within the thyroid gland itself. It's thyroid disease. But the symptoms are more pronounced when it is acute. When it's happening suddenly, then the symptoms will be more pronounced. Like sudden withdrawal of level tyrosine. Like someone is uh, on treatment with T4. And for reasons known to the individual, that is sudden stoppage of level tyrosine. That is acute state. The symptoms will be more pronounced. Or this person is having hyperthyroidism or goiter or anything, and then there was thyroidectomy. Then we'll be dealing with acute state with more pronounced symptoms. In hypothalamic pituitary problem, other hormones will be affected. So we'll be dealing with lot loss of signs and symptoms that will be outside those ones that you pick when it is only hypothyroidism. Okay, for example, you might be dealing with adrenal insufficiency because we have hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. You may be dealing with hypogonadism because we have hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis. Like in women, you might be dealing with problem with ovulation because we have hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis. So when the problem is at the osseous, affecting the hypothalamus and pituitary connection, then the signal from the hypothalamus to pituitary, then to the specific endocrine organ, will be disrupted. So if that is the case, the problem is not only with hypothalamic pituitary thyroid axis, no. Once it is from the hypothalamus to the pituitary, then the problem will cover many endocrine uh, organs. So neuroendocrine system will be disrupted. We'll be dealing with many symptoms. In Graves disease, treatment can lead to hypothyroidism. But how will you know? Because we are dealing with Graves' disease or hypothyroidic state, right? Then you want to give your medications to suppress that. Mm-hmm. Tell and so on. 
then there'll be hypothyroidism, right? Because you are suppressing it, okay? But how will you know? Of course, there are clinical features of Graves' disease. Don't worry, that will be published in the next few days. You will also see vitiligo and ophthalmopathy. Okay, it could be as a result of accumulation of matrix substances. And that will present with dry skin, hoarseness of voice, and edema. And the signs of that will be puffy face, loss of eyebrows, periorbital edema, and enlarged tongue. Okay, remember the other time I said if it is apothalamic pituitary disorder, many other endocrine organs will be affected because we have all these neuroendocrine system connections, apotalami, pituitary, adrenal axis. So when there's adrenal failure, we'll be dealing with hyperpigmentation. Of course, that is obvious. Like when someone has um, a dysonian crisis, there'll be hyperpigmentation, blood pressure will be down and so on. You may be dealing with yellowish skin changes and that will be giving you clue that you are dealing with apotalamic pituitary problem here, particularly apotalamic pituitary adrenal axis failure. Hematologically, there will be apocoagulable states, it's likelihood of bleeding, and there is a phenomenon called aquaire von Willebrand disease. That is not very common. I will not give you details here because there will be a separate presentation on that later on. Many of us are familiar with von Willebrand disease, right? But we could be dealing with acquired one here. I'll give you details in the next few days. Just check my channel for that. The anemia here will present with normochromic, normocystic features, okay? And you might be having megaloblastic anemia because if you have listened to my first presentation here, I have said Hashimoto thyroiditis will be the common cause of hypothyroidism. And now we are dealing with clinical features of hypothyroidism, right? Remember, Hashimoto thyroiditis is an autoimmune situation. Now we are talking about possible megaloblastic anemia from another autoimmune condition called pernicious anemia. So if that is the case, I have said earlier in my first presentation that when you find an autoimmune disease, please look out for all other autoimmune diseases in the same person. So it's not out of place to have the diagnosis of Hashimoto thyroiditis now with apothyroidism then having megaloblastic anemia features on peripheral blood film. Why? We are dealing with another autoimmune disease entirely here, in, you know, concomitantly with Hashimoto's, that is pernicious anemia. We could have iron deficiency anemia here, secondary to severe bleeding. In cardiovascular system, we can have mild hypertension from increasing peripheral vascular resistance. There's likelihood of decreased cardiac output and decreased heart rate, decreased heart contractility, and of course, all this will lead to heart failure. Diastolic hypertension is possible with pericardial effusions. Hypercholesterolemia, of course, hyperlipidemia, right? And hyperhomocysteinemia. When it comes to respiratory system, someone with hypothyroidism could have shortness of breath, pleural effusion, rhinitis, respiratory muscle weakness that is going to cause hypoventilation, and that alone can kill if not you know, uh, treated quickly. Sleep apnea is very common, and with that, there is increased tongue size. Mm -hmm. And you, unfortunately, the affected patient with hypothyroidism is now laying on the back 
with increased tongue size that's going to be obstructive sleep apnea. So to you know, get the cause of obstructive sleep apnea in that patient, is it as a place to have thyroid function test done? No, it's not. So it would be wise to have thyroid function test done in patient with obstructive sleep apnea. Of course, physical examination will show whether the person is having tongue size or not. Okay, I mean increased tongue size or not. It, it will also show, but to be double sure and have a Mogadon sleep, you can have thyroid function test to do. That's the intestinal tract. Constipation, because everything is slow, including peristalsis. No? Constipation, decreased taste sensation, celiac disease. Why celiac disease? Because it has autoimmune condition. From? Mm -hmm. The hypothyroidism might be secondary to Hashimoto's. And then, and I've said that you now repeatedly, my first presentation and this very one. Non alcoholic fatty liver disease, of course, the ascites. Increased weight gain. Renal system. Increased urethrin. Reproductive. Oh. More women are affected, right? Okay, let's see. Aminoria. Message is not even showing. Or small quantity, oligoaminoria. Or massive. Okay, hypermenorrhea, menorrhagia. But majority will have normal cycle. Okay, with or without infertility. So here's the problem again. You are dealing with infertility and you have to do thyroid function test. There's likelihood of early abortion. You know, later on we'll carry AIDS as um, miscarriage, right? It's part of the clinical presentations, right? Hyperprolatinemia or galaturia. That alone can send negative feedback to hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis. And with that, there'll be an ovular menses, if I told there's any. Is that a menorrhea or an ovular menses and then infertility, of course. Decreased libido or erectile dysfunction. There's a case of a man 60 years plus who was having erectile dysfunction. He didn't want to talk to anybody about it. But the wife discussed with the daughter. And in, in, in another form entirely, thinking, I have a problem with a diet. It doesn't love me anymore. I don't know whether it's doing something outside or whatever. Although the daughter has grown up, right? Uh, almost 30 years. And the daughter went to the dad. And I said, no, I did nothing like that. No. I still love her, but I just don't know. Then they brought the 60 year old plus man to the clinic. And the history from one level to the other and physical examination was pointing to hypothyroidism. And when thyroid function test was done, lo and behold, that was it. Man was placed on level tyrosine and the story changed. So men are committing suicide over what is treatable. Imagine. So it is not out of place to have thyroid function test done in a man with erectile dysfunction. The physical examination and history will also point to that anyway. So menorrhagia and pubertal delay. That young lady that is not maturing the way it should be, find out. Find out. Thyroid. Okay, Hashimoto's encephalopathy. In the face of autoimmune thyroiditis, yes, there's possibility of encephalopathy. But I will not go into that right now because that will form part seven of seven on my channel here. So that will be published in the next five days after listening to this very one. Between now and five days, you see it on my channel. So if you want to know details about Hashimoto's encephalopathy, Check my chart. Mesenchymal coma. 
Well, I'll just briefly summarize stuff here because there is a separate presentation on that also. This is a case of severe hypothyroidism, complicated by trauma, infections, cold exposure, OPAs, or hypnosis. And the clinical features will include hypercapnic steps, hypothermia, comatose, hyponatremia, or you're going to get more duties when it comes to mesedema coma on my channel as part six of this very series. Musculoskeletal system. Cabatonic syndrome. I remember in those days when we're told Cabatonic syndrome, usually women, pregnant women. Already we've discussed in part one of this series that Pregnant women with hypothyroidism likely to have Hashimoto's, right? We're back. Cavatonic syndrome, crowns, myalgia, atrigia, brittle nails. So, in diagnosis of Cavatonic syndrome, why not ruling out hypothyroidism? And in investigations, why not have functional tests? In psychiatry, depression. As a matter of fact, Part of differential diagnosis of depression is hypothyroidism. In central nervous system, decreasing hearing, paresthesia, sluggishness, learning disability in children, metabolic processes. Okay, this is where many people toss that I will start from or the only thing I will say when it comes to symptoms or clinical features of hypothyroidism. This is what we knew, you know, like the back of our hands before. Now we've known more, okay? Fatigue, weakness, cold intolerance. That is the first question we always ask. Cold intolerance, right? Dyspnea on exertion, weight gain, mental retardation, but that would be more pronounced in infants. Cognitive dysfunction, growth failure, or failure to thrive more in children. Signs of metabolic process, slow speech or dysarthria, delayed tendon reflexes on physical examination, bradycardia and carotene. Pharmacology. I'm not saying the treatment right now. Drug clearance is generally slow in hypothyroidism. So be careful. This patient is having hypothyroidism and you want to give those medications with you no know, very risky therapeutic index. Be careful. Okay. So with that, I've come to the end of this very presentation. I have dealt with all the possible clinical features of hypothyroidism, and I hope this will be helpful to someone. The next presentation will be causes of hypothyroidism and how do we make the diagnosis. And that will form part three of seven of this series. Thanks for listening. Please remember to share this presentation and subscribe to my channel so that you can get all my presentations immediately they are published. Thank you. I appreciate it.